Just woke up here. I want to do something a little bit different. I don't do a lot of post-processing here. So I brought my computer here in the camp and I want to take you guys and uh, onto the computer and show you how I dodge and burn to really bring out the power of a landscape. Dodging and burning is one of my favorite tools when it comes to adding depth and adding drama in a photo. So I'm going to get out of this tent here, make some coffee. Oh, man, I, just, I love waking up in the morning, hearing the sounds of nature. Just, it's absolutely amazing. guys well you know times like these that I absolutely love being able to get out in nature so we're gonna go ahead and jump on the computer now and I'm gonna show you guys my dodging and burning workflow all right guys now that we are here on the computer I wanted to go over two different ways that I dodge and burn now I see a lot of tutorials on how to dodge and burn but I also want to go over why and when and what to look for. So in this first example, I want to talk about where the light is coming from and where to make these adjustments. So right now on this photo, the light was coming over here from the left hand side, shining onto this side of the rock. So with that in mind, that's where I want to start looking at putting my shadows and my highlights and really starting to accentuate everything that's going on in the photo to really bring out some contrast. Now in this one, you can see here there's a not a lot of contrast in anything that's going on here. But the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to bring up my level because I want to add a little bit of contrast throughout the entire image. So I'm going to take my midtones here, which is this little indicator here. I'm going to drag it up to bring those shadows uh, down just a little bit and then I'm gonna bring my highlights and bring those over towards the left a little more. I'm just gonna make these small adjustments just to bring out a little bit of contrast and with that there, now obviously that's overdone, but what I'm gonna do here is if you see this as a white mask, I'm gonna hit Command I or Control I if you're on a PC and with a white brush at about 20% opacity, I'm gonna start painting it in slowly just in the areas that I want it. So in these areas here that are that should be high contrast, I'm gonna start painting it in there, especially right in here in this area. This area I'm gonna concentrate on a lot uh, and I'll show you guys here in a second why, but I'm gonna just gonna paint this in a little bit at a time and I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to get a little more down and dirty and I'm going to paint this all in by hand and you can see here the shadows are starting to come out a little bit essentially when you're dodging and burning all you're wanting to do is accentuate what's already there so make it a bit more dramatic and knowing where the light is coming from is extremely important when it comes to that so I think that's pretty good now just that adjustment there I'm going to turn it on and off here and you can see it's made a big difference. I'm going to hand paint in some shadows. I'm going to start burning the shadows and really creating a, like a third dimension and some depth in this photo. So I'm going to put another layer up here, a blank pixel layer, and I'm going to convert it to soft light. So what these are here, these blend modes, if you open it up here, you can see overlay, soft light, all these have to do with contrast and soft light is usually the best when it comes to dodging and burning. That's what I generally use. Of course, I'm gonna keep the brush black and I'm gonna bring the opacity down to about 5%. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm really going to see where this shadow already is and I'm going to start painting that in. And I'm going to get a smaller brush here and really start painting in and I'm gonna start down here low. This is where the shadows would be the darkest and that's down towards the bottom here. Given the lights coming in from the left again, I'm gonna paint this in a bit darker and I'm gonna paint down here in these cracks and just start shaping it up here a little bit higher these shadows aren't gonna be as deep and aren't gonna be as dark so I'm gonna still paint it in but I'm gonna keep it light that's why I'm having this really low opacity so I can paint it in darker in the areas that I want it darker and not so much as it gets higher because the light is hitting all right in here you guys can see it's a bit lighter essentially I'm trying to just sculpt this light I'm trying to bring that third dimension in and this is a great way to make it three-dimensional looking and then I'm going to come over here and again guys the lights coming in from this side so this is naturally gonna be a little bit darker over here and the lights kind of hitting up here and I want it to just look a bit natural but I want it to be more dramatic so down here again I want to have this part over here a little bit darker and as as it gets higher it gets a little bit lighter and I'm gonna keep going here now up here 
up on these rocks. The light's gonna be on this side of the rock, not on this side. So what I wanna do is make a little bit smaller brush. And down here, I'm gonna start painting it. And I'm gonna make this a bit darker down here. And now I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna show you guys what difference this has made so far. So if I'm gonna click this on and off, you can see already this has made a huge difference, made it given that three dimensional look, especially here in the foreground. I'm gonna turn this on and off again. I want you guys to see what's going on. And to me, that makes a huge difference. Now that I think I'm done with the burning part, I'm gonna double click on where it says layer number one, and I'm gonna call it burn foreground. That way I know later on if I come back, I know that that's the layer. I always do it with all of my layers. I will label them the adjustment that I've made. Do I can come back later on and uh, adjust it if I need to or just so I know what I've done. And I'm going to make another layer, convert it to soft light. And now I'm going to dodge the foreground. So I'm going to double click, put dodge foreground. And now I'm going to actually bring the opacity down a little bit maybe to about three. I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the shadows, but I'm gonna do it to the highlights now, and I'm gonna start painting in where I think the light is hitting. I think the most important part of this was uh, burning the foreground, making these shadows really come out. Uh, the brights are already pretty good. I don't really need to adjust the highlights too much. I don't need to do too much dodging on this photo. Maybe zoom in here and really start seeing where there's a little bit more light hitting and getting some of these areas here but I don't need to go crazy with this. All right, I'm gonna zoom out now and I'm gonna show you guys. So that just brought up that little bit of contrast there and I am going to highlight these, hit Command or Control G to group them. That way we can just kind of see before and after. It made a huge difference. Now in this next example is another method that I use and it is using luminosity mask. So this allows me to target the tones of the colors if I wanna dodge only the darker parts of the image, or if I wanna brighten only the brighter parts, I can do that using luminosity masks. And this is a good example of that. You can see up here in the clouds, I'm concentrating on this sky. I wanna bring out and really sculpt these clouds and bring out the contrast and make it a bit more dramatic. I wanna bring out all of this texture down here, all of these dark clouds, and I also wanna brighten these brighter parts here, but I don't want to have my adjustments leak into the other parts of the image. So what I wanna do is I'm going to create a layer of soft light and I'm gonna start darkening down these clouds. All right, so I'm gonna get a big brush and I'm just gonna start painting in the areas that I want these clouds to be a bit darker. And I apologize if you guys can hear geese in the background, they're going crazy today and it's very, very irritating. And you can see that it's affecting these highlights here because I don't have any masks on there. So here is where you're gonna use luminosity masks to apply this adjustment only to the areas that you want. The Masking panel that I use is called Lumi32. It's made by a guy named Jimmy McIntyre. Uh, he's also the creator of Raya Pro. Now there's a lot of luminosity mask panels that are available and they're all really good. This is just the one that I prefer. And so what I wanna do here is I'm looking at these and they look to me more like mid-tones. So I'm gonna grab the mid-tones. So with it coming up like this, what I wanna do is I wanna make an adjustment here. I don't want the darkening of the sky to apply to be applied to everywhere. So I'm gonna bring the tone down just a little bit. And you can see here, I'm really wanting this shape and all of this to be applied. So if I keep going with this, down to maybe 98, and maybe we'll go a little bit farther, maybe down to 90. And you can see here, it's starting to get more contrasty. The mask is getting a bit more refined, which I really like. So from here, I'm gonna hit select. And you can see the marching ants, so you can, it's a rough, uh, outline of where the effect is gonna be applied. And so I'm gonna hit Command or Control H to hide those marching ants, and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna create a mask. And this mask and the luminosity mask that I just applied is now being applied only to the areas that I want it. So if I click this on and off, you can see that now those clouds that I only want affected are being darkened while these brighter areas here are not. My next step will be to take these lighter areas and make them brighter. So that's my next uh, goal here. So I'm gonna hit Command D to make sure that nothing is, so that, uh, that I don't have a selection active anymore. I'm gonna come down here to make another layer, again, to soft light and I'm gonna make sure that I have a white brush here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna click here, and I'm gonna start painting and making these white areas a bit brighter. And if I click this on and off, you're gonna see it got applied to this entire area, and that's not what I want. So, again, I'm gonna open up my luminosity mask panel, and I'm gonna click Brights 1. 
Now you can see here, it's a pretty good mask, but I want to refine it even more. I want a more contrasty mask. I want this adjustment applied to only the brightest parts of the sky. And there's still this gray area here that is still going to have some kind of adjustment to it. And I don't want that. So I'm going to mess around here with the range. So if I bring the range down a little bit more, you can see it's starting to get better when it comes to restricting that mask only to those brighter areas that I want. So now that I have this, this is exactly what I want. This is a good mask. It's nice. It's only applying that adjustment to these brighter areas and nothing down here. So I'm going to hit select again. Again with the marching ants, I'm going to hit command or control H to hide those. And I'm going to click on a mask here. And now you can see that that has been applied just to that area, which is really nice. Now, if I want to make further adjustments to these areas, like if I want these to be even brighter, I can come up here and click on the levels adjustment. And if I want to make those even brighter, if I want to really crank on those a little bit, I can just simply delete this mask. So I can drag this down and just delete it. And I can hold Option or Alt on a PC and drag this up. And I can apply that same mask. And essentially, I'm just copying the mask. And you can see I don't want it applied over here. So I can just grab a black brush, make sure that I'm clicked on the mask over here. Bring the opacity up to probably 50% and just paint it out. Nope, i got a white brush. So let's change that, make sure it's a black brush and paint that out of here because I don't want it applied to any of this part of, this, of the scene. Let's hit Command G so we can see all of our adjustments. And you can see now what a big difference and much more drama has been added to this scene. All right, guys, that's all I really wanted to show you guys is just uh, my method of dodging and burning and how it can really bring out the drama and really bring out a third dimension in your photos to give it a bit more depth. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.